one. Hello, hello, and welcome back. This is Journeyman Sports Podcast, episode 17. Me and Gara are finally back together as a whole. We have been apart for too long, uh, gone gone too long without making a video together, and uh, we have not forgotten about you guys. We have been trying to keep the uploading going as much as possible, just a lot going on with finals week and midterms and all types of crap right now with uh, college and, you know, you know how that goes, but we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about uh, the NFL and, and week 11 predictions uh, here for the NFL and what we think of uh, some other situations going on around the league. But uh, first of all, I want to, you know, ask Garrett, how are you doing today, man? How, how's everything going? And uh, are you excited to, to be back as a whole? Oh, yeah, I'm feeling great to overcast gloomy typical november day in indiana it's cold as shit <laughs> about 20 degrees outside uh feeling good though I'm running on about four or five hours of sleep been i've read 20 chapters of a book today i'm feeling fantastic i'm ready to just do something that's not school for once so <laughs> i'm ready to go feel good it's a pretty got some good games this week and uh yeah, yeah. and i mean i mean there's already been uh, you know, one one good game here. Uh, I don't know how many people watch this game. Go ahead I don't and talk know. about this a little uh, bit. The, yeah, the, the Titans and Packers here. Um, let's just talk about if if you don't know, we are going to tell you right here and now. The uh, Green Bay Packers have been eliminated from the NFC playoff contention uh, as of the, as of this game. Um, you know, Aaron Rodgers, I think in the long run was the wrong move for the Packers to make. I think they should have invested more highly in Devonte Adams and give Jor- give Jordan Love the chance that he deserves as a number one or not a number one, but a first round draft pick. Um, and, you know, obviously we see that it didn't really work out for Denver in the long run with this Russell Wilson <laughs> thing so far. But um, who, who's to say that it couldn't have worked out somewhere else for Aaron Rodgers? Uh you know, and instead he's stuck making a bunch of money and you see his receivers here. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Christian, Christian yeah. Watson's been good though. He's got yeah, a touchdowns. Christian Watson days. has had Christian Watson has had a uh, a very promising rookie season so far. Um I talked about him a lot uh, in the draft process. If you go back and look at some of the, the mock drafts and, and uh, our pre draft videos. Uh, I talked about Christian Watson a lot as a guy that I really liked because he reminded me a lot of kind of a combination between Alec Pierce, the Colts uh, rookie wide receiver, and uh, Drake London, the the rookie wide receiver for the Atlanta Falcons. So, you know, he's he's big, fast, physical, uh, knows how to box out. He's just one of those, you know, six, four, six, five guys that is just going to go up and get it um, with, you know, four, four speed and, you know, all the, all the all the, the tricks that he can pull out of his sleeve. Um, but I mean, the Packers, man, just a huge disappointment. Uh, me personally, I think if I'm, you know, this organization, you got to start putting things in place uh, for some changes. You got to realize that I think the Aaron Rodgers era, you know, you already gave him a big contract. There's nothing you can do at this point. You just got to try to build uh, whatever you can around him. But I also do think you got to start making moves uh, and putting people in place now for when uh, the Aaron Rodgers era is done and it is time to move on because, you know, you're not going to just keep getting great quarterbacks forever. I know they've been spoiled with Favre and now Rodgers, but, Jordan you know. a great um, example of that. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but, I mean, uh, I don't think Jordan Love is going to be that caliber of player. Uh, I don't know uh, if Jordan Love is going to end up being their next franchise QB. He honestly hasn't been given the chance that I would have liked to have seen him given yet. So we'll see with that. Um, but yeah, no, if, if I'm the Packers, I would ta- I would start by firing Brian Gutenkust, uh just because he, man, I'd. I really sometimes I agree with his his free agency uh, moves here and there, but not to say that they make very many. They really don't. The Packers aren't very active in free agency, but even worse, man, he cannot draft. 
for to save his life. I mean, and that's that's been the thing with Green Bay too, especially this year. Like, I don't think Aaron Rodgers has necessarily been the problem, but to me, it's you know, I think part of it is his age, but the defense is terrible. I mean, they made Ryan Tannehill look like freaking Patrick Mahomes last night. Well, also, and it's just their also, defense is uncharacteristically bad. There's no run it's, game last night and either. It's, it is horrible to think that he picked Quay Walker in the first round over so many other talents in this draft. And n- no offense to Quay yeah. Walker, I I don't necessarily dislike him as a player, but I mean, there was at, at the spot that they picked, there was a ton of defensive talent left on the board that was better than Quay yeah, Walker, better. and you picked <laughs> Quay Walker, and also. Green Bay does not need a linebacker. They need edge rusher. They need. They don't really need interior D line that much, and they need corner insanely. They need corner so bad, but yeah. they need. I mean, they need edge rusher like a you know what too. And I mean, it is it is insane to think that they passed on so many promising young wide receivers here that they could have taken maybe a young offensive lineman that they could have taken. I'm pretty sure Linderbaum was still on the board when, uh, when the Packers picked Quay Walker, it's just like the offensive line is, is not what it needs to be for Aaron Rodgers to have the time to throw to these bummy receivers. And then when yeah. he does get the time to throw their bummy receivers. So, <laughs> I mean, when your best receiver is Randall Cobb, you're not going to be able to do much. And yeah. Randall Cobb has been hurt on and off this season too. So it's not even like they have their number one. So. Yeah. Packers have been I mean, a bit of a mess. I think. I mean, letting go of MVS last year too. I, I, I don't get yeah. that move either. Cause MVS could have stepped up and at least been a, a solid, solid number two yeah. uh, to who, whoever you make your number one. And they, like, they just let him walk to the chiefs. So. Yeah. I like Lazard. I think he's got some potential, but I mean, it's like right here, this is it for me. Like there's no run game last night. And Tennessee doesn't even have their best they haven't had their best defensive player all year either. So and also that's, that's when Green Bay's been at their best, is when they've been able to run the ball. But I think also, bro, yeah. I find it a huge problem, a humongous problem. This team is already short at wide receiver. This team already is atrociously just awful at wide receiver. Let, let's not even just say they're bad. They are horrible at wide receiver. Definitely the worst wide receiving core in the league. And yes, it this wide receiving core is worse than Houston's. It's worse than any other one around the league. You cannot find a worse wide receiving core than this. But um, on top of that, with that being said, they released Amari Rogers the other day. Yeah. And a lot of people will be like, oh, well, he's a third round pick. It, it doesn't really matter. Number one, a third round pick is still in the higher rounds of the draft. You don't just waste a third round pick. It's not a third round pick is not something you just throw at a player and just like, eh, if it works, whatever. No, yeah, so third pick can still be very, very valuable. And I guarantee you, you could have found way better defensive talent than what you found. I mean, yeah. bro, bro, Tariq Wolin, the the possible defensive rookie of the year this year, mm. uh, the the rookie corner for for yeah. Seattle. He didn't go until the fifth round. Like, yeah. you know how bad Green Bay could use a guy like that to – and what does Tariq Wollin have? He has like six, seven, or maybe – I think he might even have eight picks. I'm, I'm not even sure. He has he's a lot a of picks amount. for a rookie. Yeah. For and, and he's player. balling. He really is balling. I mean, he covered Brady like – the the other night when Brady went to go catch a pass, Wollin, you know, clamps. that's, that's clamps. clamps. <laughs> Seatbelts right there, man. But – no, it's it's just insane to me. You wasted a third round pick last year. Amar Rodgers was a rookie last season. You wasted yeah. a third round pick last year to throw away a position of need. Because it's not like they can just throw away whatever receivers they have. They need the receivers that they do have in order to perform. And they're letting a young what Amari Rodgers is like 22, 23. They're letting a young young playmaker from Clemson that they just picked a year ago go already who by the way already got claimed by guess who the Houston Texans yeah yeah bro like that's the Texans are making moves to consciously make their team better I feel like the Packers every single time I see them are making a a move to make their teams worse worse almost so yeah Titans side 
on the Titans side, to talk about the game, sorry, I, I went on my little Packers tangent, but to talk about the game, the Titans played very well. I thought uh, their defense played well. Tannehill looked pretty pretty good. Um, Derrick Henry is Derrick Henry. I mean, That's there's the nothing else to say. Tennessee going forward is <laughs> they'll go as far as Tannehill can take them. So, I mean, they'll go. Well, yeah. they'll also they'll also go as far as the offensive line goes. I mean, uh, I think people kind of panicked about Tennessee, but what you also have to real, realize about Tennessee is they're starting three backups on their offensive line right now. Yeah, and, and they're also the best. They are the best coach team in the league, in my opinion. Like, I don't, they 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 are a very no, they are extremely well coached. And also, another thing that people need to realize uh, going forward is. The Titans are in a bad situation with uh, their left tackle right now, Taylor Lewan, because they get, if you remember like two seasons back, they gave him a humongous bag and uh, he has not been able to stay on the field. I think he's played five games for them since getting his big contract. So it's, it's a bad situation over there. Uh, I do feel for the Titans in some ways, because I feel like they're, they do make very, very good moves. Like I, you you know I'm a Malik Willis guy. I love the Malik Willis pick. Uh, I think that's just smart for their future. I also really like the Traylon Burks pick. I'm not ready to give up on Traylon Burks at all. I think uh, he yeah, had a no. solid game last night, if I remember. I, yeah, no, no, but also – Yeah, he had seven uh, for 111. That's A lot of people are, are so ready to give up on him already, which I really don't understand. But He's a, the Titans he's a dog spot. for me in our Madden the, the, league. He's a dog. <laughs> <laughs> the, Titans, the Titans are uh, – in a good spot moving forward, but also do keep in mind uh, you have to l- take the record with a grain of salt at the end of the year because they are in, if not the worst hey, division in football, hey, the, hey, second, hey, the second hey, worst hey. division in football. No, no. <laughs> no. Like second worst division no. in football. But so they got the I best mean, up-and-coming team right here, though. Right here. <laughs> best up-and-coming team. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see, man. We'll All see. Right. So we got to. Move on. So we got the first one o'clock game on Sunday. The Bears are going to the Falcons. Bears have been playing some some inspired football behind Justin Fields the past couple weeks. He's you he's starting you to know look what, like the easy number two quarterback from you know, that draft. No, no, yeah, he is. You know what the Bears are kind of reminding me of right now? Hmm. They're reminding me of last year's Lions. Yeah, it's just crazy like, because like they've been playing well, but they just they got no defense. They traded everyone away. Yeah, I mean the the Lions last year, that's how they were. They they were kind of like in that year cuz they had just hired hired Dan Campbell last year, yeah. had a new like a pretty good a pretty good uh first draft class for a new GM and a head coach to have. And then on top of that, uh I mean, they they had some talent, but they also had traded and and lost a lot yeah. last year. So that I mean, but what was crazy about them is you could see how good of a coach Dan Campbell is, and you you could see that in Hard Knocks too this year. The but, culture that um, he's building, especially. But yeah, yeah. I mean, like push ups with his players, all that stuff, which I love. But um, I think that is what the Bears are kind of doing now. They're they're kind of starting to turn their culture just like how the lions have like the lions every single game they play they are close in other than the the one game against the patriots this season but mm-hmm. they every the bears game have been that they, the last couple weeks too that, like, that's what i'm saying like yeah. every other every game like last year that's why i'm comparing them to the last year's lions because last year literally every single game that the lions played was like a six point game seven point yeah. game it was a one Score possession less. game every time yeah and and that's exactly what the Bears are reminding me of. I mean, Chicago are like Chicago looks good on offense. I actually like their offense. I think Claypool is going to make that offense even better. Yeah. And if they can add, because they have Mooney and they have Claypool, if they can add like one more guy or even two more guys, like in in the draft class or in free agency, yeah, they'll be they'll be dangerous like soon. And the I, way that I, Justin I like, Fields is playing, they'll they'll probably get some some guys to come there down down the road. You you also got to think like this team it honestly isn't that bad on offense the offensive line still needs some help um yeah definitely <laughs> i'm not and and like i said they still need one or two more receivers like i said they're not there but it's really their defense and if they if they can just strengthen their defense even enough to just get stops sometimes yeah and then strengthen their offense because 
you everyone's got to keep in mind Justin Fields is doing this right now with a terrible offensive line. Just a not if, very good it, team in general. Just not, not not a good team, but just a whole, like the offensive line it has been the problem since last year. I mean that that's been known it's been very well known that like it's just not a good offensive line Mm -hmm. but he is starting to show like okay even without offensive line i'm still going to give you a chance just because i'm talented and everyone knew justin fields was talented but you know i mean for some reason dual threat quarterback scare teams nowadays i don't get why fastest quarterback in the league like whenever like i didn't know he was that fast the he's like the, skill, like like skill position fast. It's uh, crazy. Didn't he? He had like a seventy three yard run. Something uh, stupid like that. Year. But it was just like, yeah. damn. Like he's got he's got all the tools, and he's really starting to develop as a passer these last couple weeks too, which is the good he thing looks to good. see. But he looks Falcons, good. now on the Falcons side. They're um, they're no slouch either. They've played. They've outperformed what I thought they would do. I thought they would finish close to this win total, but. <sighs> Cordero thought, Patterson, Drake London, those guys are those guys are balling. Mariota doesn't honestly look horrible. Now, nah, he's I not don't, bad at all. Don't don't think I'm calling Mariota good because I'm not. He is not. <laughs> he is bad. on any other team. He would not start, but but with the Falcons, he'll start because I mean I just don't think the Falcons are comfortable enough with Ritter right now, which is understood. Like I think the thing that made everyone very confused this past year or at least with the draft is like if you look at mock drafts from before the draft if you look like people everyone had Malik Willis going first round and yeah. Ritter Ritter either like even going either Ritter or Pickett going in the like end of the first round or like early early second round every single quarterback except Pickett went third round yeah. or fourth or fifth or sixth you know like Third round or later. And, yeah, I mean, now, like, I think it confused people because everyone's like, oh, why aren't they starting Ritter? Why aren't they, you know, why aren't they starting Malik Willis? Because everyone is thinking of them as a first-round talent when, in all reality, they were picked in the third round. So so teams are like, yeah, this is a guy we got in the third round. We can wait a little bit. We don't have to – it's a third-round pick. We don't have to rush him into the game right now. Exactly. Now – if we're making early predictions for this for this rookie uh, QB class, if I had to pick my top three, the guys that I think are going to be the top three to come out of this class, because, I mean, most guys, let's just be honest, will be out of the league in three or four years uh, from just that class just because that's how the NFL goes. Yeah. Backups, yeah. yeah, it's just how the NFL goes, but – if I had to pick three guys that I uh, and, you know, I'm sure w- at least because it's very rare to see three quarterbacks actually succeed from a draft class. So I'm just saying three guys that you'll su- see succeed more than the other guys in the draft. Yeah. class. I'm going to say Malik Willis will be the number one quarterback in this class. I I truly do think that Um, you look at where the position that he's in right now. In Tennessee, he's going to be – he's in a good spot backing up a good quarterback. He's going to – I mean, if Traylon Burks gets on track and uh, also their tight end – their rookie tight end, Chigazia McConquo, he's he's a beast. Uh, he's really fast. Kind of reminds me of Jelani Woods, just smaller and blocks a little bit better. And then, I mean, bro. And then my second one would be – I. Hear me out, Bailey Zapp. I think Bailey Zapp is going to be the second best quarterback out of this class because I don't think Mac is going to be there after. I don't even know if they're going to pick up his fifth year option, just depending on how he plays. But I mean, you look at the Patriots right now; that's not a good situation either. And then I don't know; it's, I, it's not bad. That that division's open, in my opinion. Yeah, I think, and that's. One game this week that's probably the biggest game of the week is the Patriots and the Jets. That's that's a big time football game. Yeah, yeah, no, it definitely is. And then my my third from this draft class would probably be Ritter, just because I think Ritter is going to be. I think it, it not. I don't think Ritter is necessarily more talented than he all the than all the other guys. 
but you look at what he did in, in his last year of college, that kind of shows that he's a pretty good leader. I mean, he went final four with Cincinnati in his, in his final year in college. Yeah. And then also, I just think he's going to be in the best situation as a whole because the Falcons are like really trending on the upside. Like their offense mm-hmm. is getting much better. They They're traded using Kyle they tra- Pitts now. <laughs> yeah, they traded their locker room cancer of a receiver. They, you know, hey, I mean, their hey, defense hey. is let's, let's calm <laughs> down. God damn. Their defense is getting better. Um, a lot of things that I like. Uh, things are looking up in Atlanta for sure, but I, I, I think Ritter is probably going to be number three in that class just because of the situation that he's in. But to answer the my prediction, this game, I'm gonna say Chicago. I'm what's, gonna I'm gonna go Chicago score? here. What's your score prediction? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go 21-17. I'm gonna swing the opposite way from you. I'm gonna go with Atlanta in this one. I think that division is still still close with them and the them and the Buccaneers. I think at home they're gonna come out with good energy. I think this is gonna be a whole lot of offense, whole lot of no defense. I've got. Atlanta winning this one 33 to 30 and the Bears lose another close game. So Okay. Next one. I, I, I like we both had had that yeah. being a close game. I think it's gonna be close because I think it's two two hungry teams no matter how you how you slice it. And this one, this Man, is the Colts are a fun one. The Colts, the Colts are just are a interesting fun one. this year. You know, you know exactly what you're getting from the Eagles here. Colts. Jeff Saturday caught a lot, a lot of flack. I love, I love that he won that game. That made he I'm, not even, right Colts, back. I'm he not even a Colts right fan back. like that. But yeah, he didn't write back. And I love like <laughs> I love his energy right now with the team. And I don't think they're gonna make a playoff push or anything like that. But I just think that the Colts are on like a better trajectory with him right now. I think in the NFL, like you hear this a lot in college, especially too, but I think it's true in all like higher up sports. Like with Reich, I think the voice just gets old and you know, you have that never ending quarterback cycle and then just kind of gets his hand forced with having to play Ellinger essentially. Well, but do you, Reich is interesting because I don't like you look at what Reich did, he didn't really do anything wrong. No, I don't there's, think it was him. I just think there's nothing se. that like you can pick out and be like, oh, he wasn't a good head coach. Like you look at what he did. There was, I mean, there was a season where what they lost like their first five in a row and then turned around and won every yeah. single game. And like that's the thing. It's just like, weird, weird stuff like that. Like it, yeah. it doesn't really seem to click until later in the season for his teams. Yeah, and that's it's but, been that way ever since he's been here. Even with it, Andrew and, Luck, like it's even, just even with the Eagles, bro. That that's how they were too. Like the Eagles really didn't get good with him until later in the season, and maybe that's just the way his teams play. I don't, I don't know. But also. We do have to cut him a little bit more slack than uh, some other head coaches just because you really look at it like the organization. It wasn't even necessarily Frank Reich, but like Ursay and Ballard were just wanting to bring in whoever quarterback that they could get their hands on. Like it didn't even matter if necessarily the quarterback was better than the one that they already had. Like they, it just seemed like they were grabbing almost any quarterback that was available at some point. Yeah, and that's that's the thing is as many games as like or as many quarterbacks as he had, you can't blame him. My biggest gripe with him, like you know, having being in Indiana and pretty much watching almost every game like the past ever since he's been here, I just don't think situationally he's very good. Like I don't know, there would just be some times where it would just be like, "What the hell are you doing?" Like fourth and one, Man, that's- Jonathan Taylor, like, you know, you know exactly what they want to do. They want to run it up the middle. So why are you going to run it up the middle? Like, it's just <laughs> that's stupid why stuff I- like that, that I don't get. It's yeah, no, it's, it's, it's not a good situation. And then of course you look over at the Eagles and the Everything Eagles is going right. Except, except their most recent game. I mean, yeah, that was, that was just, but honestly, I feel like, Going undefeated is such a overrated thing. Yeah, like uh, winning in winning and, games and, in the NFL and, is so hard already. Of course, but also it almost makes it like, like I don't know about you, but I, all I hear is you know when the Eagles were undefeated, I just hear people are like, I wonder when they're gonna lose. 
People yeah. are just sitting, waiting around for a team to lose whenever they haven't lost yet. And I mean, most of the times the the teams do lose. So I'd rather see the Eagles lose now. I think it's going to be good for them. To, uh, as opposed to fall apart in the end of the year because they haven't lost at all, like the Steelers yeah. did a couple of years ago. Like I don't I think I think it's good for them ultimately. Plus, I think oh, they just yeah. got Nadamakum Sue yeah, yesterday. That's a, good, that's a good sign. They added they added him and Linval Joseph in back to back days to on a already insane defensive line. Yeah, just so, wait till Jordan Davis gets back too. <laughs> I mean yeah, I mean Jordan Davis, Fletcher Cox, uh Brandon Graham um who else is on that <laughs> who else is on that oh J- isn't javon hargrave still there i think so like they, they've got um, a bunch of beasts yeah. over there but they're they're insane is, and then man this game is Redick. interesting though because i i legitimately think like the colts could put up a fight in this one it might be Here, crazy here's to think. here's what i think i think hear me out i think the colts lose this game Oh, I yeah, I agree. <laughs> I think I think I think they lose this game, but I think they go ten six and one. Hmm. Interesting. Because it just seems for me like you look at the talent on that team. There's no reason they should have lost this much in the first place. Then oh, yeah. Y- you look at, but then you also turn around and look at like the newfound momentum that they almost seem to, like they found with Jeff Saturday and like their win. They just came off a win. They have a new head coach, kind of a new energy in that locker room. I don't think it's out. Like I don't think it's absolutely insane to say they go ten six and one. I think they lose this game and then win out from there. Hmm. No, Unless put them potentially in a playoff spot, maybe yeah, it just depends. I don't. I don't think that they can go below eight wins like I, I think they at least get eight wins yeah um so you got the eagles winning this one too i've got the e i'm gonna say the eagles win this one like i'm gonna say 21 to 10 21 to 10 yeah i got the eagles winning i think it's gonna be i think it's gonna be a close like closer kind of game but i've got them winning 28 to 20 so this is okay. the this is probably the game of the week in my opinion. Jets and the Patriots. Jets are red hot right now. I believe both teams are coming off of a bye. We know how good Belichick is off of byes, especially against young quarterbacks. So we know I'm I'm gonna put it this simple, bro. We know how good Belichick is against the freaking Jets. Like, especially, like yeah. I, I don't think you just look at history. And History you look at the tends world, to repeat like, itself eventually. It does. It does. And the Patriots are no slap. Like I know there was a ton of confusion with, you know, the quarterbacks in the first couple of weeks and and stuff like that. And there still is this. The, the Patriots, like I said, is kind of a messy situation right now. But the Jets are just so young and so inexperienced that they're they are a good team. Mm-hmm. But. I mean, I don't know. They're a good team. It's just for me. I, I like. I see the Patriots as they have won. They're older. They're more experienced. They're a veteran team. They know what they're doing. Yeah. They're way more put together on paper. They have the talent. They have Belichick. Like I, I don't. I see it being a close game, but I'm gonna say. Um, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with a weird one here. I'm gonna go twenty-four to twenty-eight. Who the Patriots? Patriots. Pa- Patriots win 24-28. I am actually gonna swing in the opposite direction of you for exactly what you said. I think that with how, I think the Jets are inexperienced a little bit, but I also think the energy that's surrounding them right now. You've got a bunch of young guys that are keyed and hyped up. I think at Fox Bro makes it a much different game. But I think that Jets defense is legit. Sauce Gardner's legit. I said on the last episode, he's already Sauce Gardner high. is legit. Yeah. Sauce Gardner Sauce Gardner is is everything that he was advertised to be so far. Yeah, what the heck? I had to buy longer than 40 minutes for this. 
Okay, well, we might have to speed through this, apparently. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go with the Jets in a low-scoring game, 17-14. Yeah, what the f- fudge? Okay, anyway. Technical difficulties. This is kind of a crazy game. but I think okay, we got 10 minutes. We're good. Yeah, I think this is a pretty easy one to pick, though. I'm going with Washington. I think no, they're, no. They're I, on a hot I, streak right for now. For some reason, okay, for some reason, I feel differently about this game. Hmm. I, I think, I think te- the Texans are going to catch Washington slipping here. Like, hmm. hear me out. Hear me out, bro. I just think uh, I, it's going to be a close game, but, like, I think it's literally going to be – I think it's going to be like 10 to like 17 to 10 is probably my, 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 my estimation here, but I, I just like the way Houston fights uh, and always seems to fight even no matter who they are putting up with it. It just seems like they always lose in the fourth quarter. Yeah. Um, it, it just, I don't know. It, it seems like Houston always loses in the fourth quarter. It seems like, you know, they, they are always in it until they just absolutely fall apart at the end of the game. Um, I don't know why that happens, but also like Davis Mills has played worse than he played last season, this season. And mm-hmm. um, he looks worse, but also you got to look at the team around him is just absolutely horrible. <laughs> so I don't know. It's, it's going to be an interesting game, but for some reason, Washington just seems to be like they, they take, three steps forward and then they take two backwards. So it's like, I feel like they've been taking steps forward recently. So I think they're going to fall two steps backward. And you got we're Houston gonna, in this one. I think they're going to catch them asleep. I think it's going to be 17 to 10, 17 to 10. I've got Washington 24 to 20 in that one. All right. I got seven and a half left. Jeez. We might just have to kind of pick and yep. choose. Okay. Uh, let's see. Talk Bengals Steelers. This could be a good game. Week one, Steelers with a crazy upset win against the Bengals. This one, I don't see it. I don't see it happening again. I think the Bengals are just too talented. No TJ Watts coming back for the Steelers, but I really I like the Bengals to win big in this one. I've got the Bengals um, in this one 31 to 10. Okay. That's a nah, I'm that's gonna, big. I'm gonna call I've that got- one. I've got twenty-eight to seven. Bengals. Twenty-eight to seven. Bengals. Yep. I, yeah. Just because the Bengals, man, they they've looked so good recently. Jamar Chase looks like Jamar Chase again, and I mean, I think they're finally snapping out of the the Super Bowl hangover. Yeah. So I, I and and them. that's a division rival that beat them earlier. So I just think they got. I, I really do think the Steelers got for that game. I, I I think they're gonna lose. I think the Steelers are gonna lose. <laughs> yeah. This is this another big game. Cowboys going to the Vikings. Cowboys coming off a big surprising loss in Lambeau. Um, this one I've got I've got the Cowboys and I've really? got the Cowboys. Wow. I've got I've got the Cowboys winning this one 35-14. Holy sh- Because hear me out. Kirk Cousins. Kirk Cousins versus a extremely good pass rush that is fair but i like what i've seen from kirk this year kirko i hate what I, me personally i have hated what i've seen from kirk except Interesting. except i mean even in their wins bro you look at some of their wins kirk played absolutely awful in some of those games it's literally just dalvin cook and justin jefferson just being god yeah, Justin Jefferson is crazy good. Like he's I think insane. he's easily established himself as the best receiver in the league. I you think know, he's let, the LSU only puts they... the best talent in the league, so it makes sense. Yeah, but... that's, that's <laughs> true. But I got the I got the Vikings in this one. I think at home they're going to defend. They're coming off a big win in Buffalo. I think the boys in Minnesota are all buzzing. So I've got the Vikings winning this one. 23 to 20. I think this isn't going to be the most explosive game, but I think Dallas is, if Dallas leans into the run, which is what they are good at and what they should stay doing, they have a chance to win. I don't know why they go away from it. Dallas is, I I really, well, also, I really like, a reason why I like Dallas so much this year is Noah Brown, bro. He's solid. Noah Brown, slot receiver. 
He's he good. gets to, like never hear him get talked about. But like every single time I watch a Cowboys game, Noah Brown makes like eight catches. Just yeah, just like the first quarter. Like you'll just see Dak throw him the ball on these like little five yard outs, these little slants, these little like pop fly routes, like just out of nowhere. And you're like, who the hell is that guy? And then you're like, oh shit, I've never heard of him before, but he's good as hell. Yeah. And he's solid. He's, yeah, he's 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 really good. Just want to give him some praise. But I got the Giants in this one. It's going to be a close game, though. The, the Lions never go down without a fight. The Giants – actually, no. You know what, Gary? I'm going to go Lions. You're going with the Lions, bro. too? Let's go. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Because – no, I, I like the That's Lions a lot more in this game. I, because the Giants, bro – this just I've, seems like I've, the type just, of game the Lions would win. It, yeah, it just does. Like, I, I, I don't even know, really know why. It just – it looks – it just does to me. This it seems the like game the game that win. the Lions would win. And I don't know why, but it also just seems like the type of game that the Giants would lose too. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I don't think that's a slight on the Giants. The Lions are just – they're better than you think they are. And I think – They really are. And, this and they're, makes that – They might be the best about. three and six team in the league. They might yeah. be the best three-win team in the league. I don't know. I think Jags are better. Anyways, but that makes that Cowboys-Vikings <laughs> game that much more important because if the Cowboys win and the Giants do lose, that puts them both at seven wins. That division gets even tighter. And then Washington, if they can win, puts them up to six. And then you've yeah. got the Eagles if they win. So it would be nine for the Eagles, seven and seven for the Cowboys and Giants, and then six for Washington. So no one's out of that division yet, in my opinion. Then we'll get one final game here. Let's talk about let's talk about your Saints and the Rams here. Man, okay. Listen, we don't I'm going to come for a rant. We don't have time. No, for I'm coming to the table for my Saints really quick. I just want to say fuck Dennis Allen number 1. Number 2, we have the worst head coach in the league. Number 3, we have probably the worst quarterback situation in the league other than Marcus Mariota. And number 4, the Saints just I don't know what has happened. We just have fallen apart in big games and big moments this year. And it's very clear that we miss Sean Payton. But oh, yeah. I do have us winning this game because the Rams look that much worse. And they're I just have, so hurt. Like, without Cooper Cup. Yeah. The Rams The Rams have almost nobody. I don't think Allen Robinson is going to turn into a number one wide receiver again all of a sudden. Mm-hmm. And also, I don't think Tutu Atwell is going to carry that team on his back either. Which And, like, Van Jefferson, no. Cam Akers has played awful. Matthew Stafford doesn't look good. The offensive line is horrible. The defense hasn't played well. Aaron Donald doesn't even look like Aaron Donald. It's it's bad for the the Rams. But long story short, and, they're not themselves. Yeah, and we are at least healthy enough to get something done. As long as we don't play like an absolute bag of trash, we should be okay. And I have us winning this game, seventeen to ten. Yeah, I got the Saints winning this one too at home. The Rams are coming off a big time emotional blow with losing Cooper Cup. I think the Saints have got everything going for them in this specific game. Uh, So, yeah, I'm going to pick the Saints to win. I'm going to say. Again, we lost to the fucking Steelers, so who knows? I'm going to say. I really don't. I don't get it. 24 to 23. I think this is a close one. I'm going to make a video. I'm going to drop a video, probably a solo video. I'm going to. It's going to be titled, What the Fuck Are the Saints Doing? (laughs) That's exactly what it's going to be titled and is going to be on this channel at some point. All right, but um, so that'll do it for episode 17, the Journeyman Sports Podcast. I don't know what is happening. My Zoom right now is tweaking balls, <laughs> but we're gonna but I'm gonna get this figured it's been out. Great, but we got we got the episode in. We got eight game picks. We're gonna try and keep track of these throughout the season so we can see who ends better. Maybe put like ten bucks on it or something. But comment, comment if you think we're right or wrong, and also comment your own predictions as well. We'd love to hear it and reply. Yeah. And you know, we we will check any any feedback possible. So, yeah. uh, yes. All right. Thank you guys for watching. <laughs> this is episode seventeen of the Journeyman Sports Podcast, and we will see you next time.